Hi guys, thanks for watching our Escape Debate presentation. My name is Allison Harry, and I'm the Student Assistance Program Coordinator at Keystone Substance Abuse Services. And this is one of our RAP sessions, which stands for Raising Awareness for Parents and Students. And this is the student section of this presentation. So I'm sure you guys have heard all about vapes and you're probably sick of hearing about them. Hopefully today I'm gonna to bring this information to you in a new way and you guys learn something you haven't learned before. So you've probably seen these, or at least items like these around your school, maybe at your house, maybe when you're out with your friends, or at least online. And we're going to talk today about what they are. So we're going to talk about the differences between old school cigarettes and new school vapes, and kind of how they compare to each other. So first off, we have a short little list. and both contain nicotine. So most vapes contain nicotine. I would say 99.9% .9 of them do. And if they say they have a low amount or none, I would be very suspicious of them because what's in it? Most vapes, especially disposable vapes, are going to contain some sort of nicotine. Both can cause health problems. Now I know vapes are still newer and the health problems are still a little bit unknown, but they are health problems that have been linked to vaping. And once again, both are addictive. Both contain nicotine, and nicotine is one of the most addictive chemicals, which means that both of these can cause addiction. Now, vapes were made to help smokers quit smoking, right? This is true. They were made to help smokers quit smoking, but I don't think that's exactly what they're doing. So who is vaping? And I want you guys to think about this honestly. Have you seen, you know, the typical smokers in their 50s and 60s vaping? And if so, how many? I'm guessing probably not a lot. The people that are vaping are more, you know, your classmates, so your friends, people that you know your age, which is a huge problem. Most people that are vaping are non-smokers is the second thing. And we wanna know why, why is this a thing? If they were made to help smokers quit smoking, while the sun are non-smokers picking them up. Well, to do that, we're gonna talk about three main things, money, marketing, and myths. And these are the three things that contributed to why so many non-smokers started vaping. So we're gonna go back in history a little bit and talk about the fact that the United States almost beat cigarette smoking amongst teenagers. When I was in high school, not too terribly long ago, there was all these commercials on MTV that said like, you could be the generation that ends smoking. And that was true. My generation, you guys' generation, we weren't smoking. We went to school and we saw, you know, all the substances that were in cigarettes and we heard the stories and we saw the nasty commercials with people with holes in their throats. And we knew like, no, that's not for us. We don't want to mess with that. So we stayed away from it and it was slowly was going down, which was great for everyone except big tobacco. These big cigarette companies were like, dang, they outsmarted us. Like we're losing all this money because we have, you know, older adults that are now hooked, but we have no new customers coming in. So they were a little upset and they were trying to figure out how can we fix this? And they went back to their drawing board and they went back to their playbook and they said, hmm, we have nicotine that is already an addictive chemical. Proven fact. And we have these kids that love technology, right? The technology generation, they've grown up with it in their back pocket. What if we mesh the two and we combined two highly addictive items into one super addictive package? And that's where these things came from, okay? That's where vapes initiated. And one of the first kind of vapes that hit super big was Juul a few years ago. And Jewel, the guy that made it, actually worked for Apple. So he knew exactly what to do to make a device that everybody wanted in their pocket. So it's new products, but it's the same results. Now, how did they do this? How did they basically take all their old cigarette stuff, package it up as a vape, ship it out, and everyone still decided they wanted to try it? And this is where marketing comes to play. They kind of brainwashed us a little bit and kind of convinced people that, it was one thing instead of the other, like the magician trick where it's like, watch this hand, why do something with this one? That's what went on. So in the 70s, they banned all 
cigarette advertisements. There was no commercials, there was no radio ads, there was no promotion of, hey, try a cigarette. Because they were finding out that they were getting um, teenagers addicted and that cigarettes weren't all they cracked, were cracked up to be. So they had no commercials for them. So kids in the you know, 80s, 90s, 2000s, they never saw commercials for any kind of nicotine product until recently when vape advertisements started getting promoted. I didn't see my first like pro commercial for any kind of nicotine product till I was 25. So that was last year. Like it, they weren't around. Then they started coming out and they started very simply like, you know, no ashtray needed and things like that. So they started promoting themselves again. They started using hashtags, which is, you know, most older people are not using hashtags. And then Jewel started putting really young people in their ads. Like the guy at the bottom with the comb. Looks like he walked off the set of Riverdale pretty much. So they started promoting it to us and to your generation without us even kind of realizing it. So that's a video that was made by um, some of your peers at the Applied Technology Center in Rock Hill, South Carolina, in Rock Hill, um, the Rock Hill School District. And we really want to thank them for doing that because it is y'all's perspective of how these products work and that they are glamorized on your Instagrams and on TikTok and things like that. But the reality is very different. Just like this ad shows, it's not popcorn. It's flavored like that. And just because something is flavored like that doesn't mean that's what's in it. And sometimes we're disconnected because it smells like something or it tastes like something, but really it's not. So then we have our myths. So we've done marketing, we've done money, we're moving on to myths. And there's a lot around them. It's just water vapor. It's harmless, like no big deal. And those are not true. So the first one, we're gonna watch this video about what chemicals are actually in these devices. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna to be trying a couple new products starting with formaldehyde. Benzy, I'm excited about this one. Let's try lead. Tastes a little like, like grade school pencils. Diethylene glycol. Some acetone. Great for nail polish remover too. Um, oh, and don't forget flavor. In this case, Mango. <laughs> or you could just vape. It's aerosol and a bunch of chemicals with just a little flavor for taste. So that video is just kind of to show us like what's going on in these vapes and that it's not all it's cracked up to be, that there are these dangerous chemicals in there and they just mask it with that flavoring. And she talks about mango, but it, you know, it's whatever flavor people are buying. That's what's masking it. So Along with that, they tricked us pretty good with the name vapes and calling it vaping because it very much takes it away from smoking. If people asked us like, oh, are you a smoker? No, I'm a vapor. No, I vape. No, I jewel. Like that was what it was a few years ago. Taking a stigma away from smoking into something else. It's not smoking. It's a vape and it's very different when in reality it's not. And we have to think about that in our heads, that they did that on purpose to rebrand it. And they also confused us because there was a whole thing about, oh, it's water vapor. You know, that's why it's called a vape. But that is wrong. <laughs> it is so wrong. It is not water vapor. So if I had a spray bottle of water and I sprayed my hair, it's just going to get wet and it's going to dry and be normal. But that's not what's in these products. What's in these products is actually an aerosol. And an aerosol is what comes off of like, hairspray cans or an axe body spray like she was spraying in her mouth you saw that is an aerosol an aerosol is highly different than a water vapor aerosol leaves residue 
And if you've ever used any kind of hairspray or been around someone that uses hairspray, you get that odor just like you would with a vape. And then there's residue left over, right? It's going to make your hair stay where it's supposed to. And I know every morning when I spray my hair with hairspray, it gets on my phone. And I have to go and wipe my phone off because there's all these little dots on it from the hairspray. Okay. Same thing goes on with vapes. And vapes, secondhand of smoke effect from the smoke around it. And then third hand with the residue that gets on. So if I was vaping here, it gets on my laptop, gets on my desk, things like that. So we want to make sure everyone understands that just because it's called vaping, just because it is a vape does not mean it's water vapor, does not mean it's nicotine vapor. It is really an aerosol. And a lot of these chemicals get a lot more dangerous when we aerosolize them because we're changing how it's, you know, made up. Now there's risks. And I know this is probably not what you guys want to hear, but we're just going to go over them because you need to know them so you can make an informed decision around this stuff. Nicotine addiction is an obvious risk to, you know, using any kind of nicotine product is getting addicted to it. And this happens very quickly and sometimes we don't even realize it because it just happens and it can happen, you know, after a couple hits, maybe even just one. Mouth or throat irritation. So it can irritate your throat and your lungs because anytime we're putting anything in our lungs that's not air, not a good idea. It can be dangerous. Coughing and wheezing, because once again, it's messing with our lungs. Chest pain or having a very high, tight chest. Raised blood pressure, an increase in the heart and heart rate. Because nicotine is a stimulant and a stimulant raises heart rates. So instead of our hearts being normal like this, it's gonna be being super fast like this. And that can cause problems. An upset stomach. Um, vapes have been linked to inc an increase in acid reflux, which causes this bile in our stomachs to increase and make that kind of burning sensation that comes up. Nausea, seizures, there has been a link between vaping and seizures as much as people don't want to believe it. There is, um, and it's when people are using vapes over and over again. And then nicotine poisoning is a real thing and people can get breathless, breathlessness, collapse, loss of consciousness, all from getting too much nicotine in their system. And then the unknown, okay. So the long-term effects of these vapes are still very much an unknown thing. We don't know because they are still so new. You guys are the guinea pigs with these products, okay? We don't know in 10, 20, 30 years what the consequences of vaping is gonna be, okay? When cigarettes first came out, doctors gave them to people. They gave them to military. They were you know, sent to minorities and said, here, try these. Doctors said, you have a headache, here's a cigarette. And then we learned, Mmm, are bad. Those are not good things. We really don't need to be giving those out to people. Okay, but by then it was too late. People were addicted. People were using them. And I'm not saying that's what's going to happen with these, but we don't know. Okay, these things are still so new that there could be dangers that we aren't even seeing yet. And in 10, 20 years, there might be, you know, commercials with people with holes that say, hey, I was vaping. We just don't know. But if it's going the way that it seems to be, that's where we're headed because everything else lines up with how cigarettes worked. So just be aware of that and think about that when you're around this stuff. And the results of all this, once we look at it as a whole, big tobacco and big vape are back rolling in their money, right? They made a profit. They decided, okay, we were losing money with cigarettes and now we're making money with vapes. So they got what they wanted out of it. And there's even research that shows that people that vape are more likely to start smoking at some point in their life. So they're back making what they want to make. Their problem is solved. But the other result is a teen vaping crisis. A new generation addicted to a new product with the same chemical. Okay. So they got what they want, but we didn't get what we needed because now we have a whole generation of kids and teenagers using this stuff and we don't know where it's gonna go. So just think about that and- In the last few years, I've had a lot of vaping experiences around my peers. For example, as a college athlete, um, a lot of my teammates would vape and would not perform as well on their fitness test as well as games. They could not last 90 minutes. And unfortunately, that really caused us a lot of negative impacts.
during our season. That there is help out there if you know someone that's vaping or if you're vaping yourself and you want to quit. And that's what this is. There is a, a text line that says ditch jewel. It works for any kind of vape. It doesn't have to be a jewel because I mean, no jewels old school at this point. Um, and they'll send you text messages and encourage you. We also have a program in all school districts, right? Fort Mill, Clover, Rock Hill, York. If you want to talk to somebody about any kind of substance use, it doesn't have to be vaping. It can be marijuana, alcohol, you know, it can be pills. It can be whatever you're struggling with or need to know more about. We have substance abuse counselors at your schools and you can scan that code and it will send you right to a link or to a website where you click a link and you can ask for a referral. We take self-referrals. We take referrals for friends. You don't have to put your name. It can be anonymous and that you just think someone needs help. It's completely free. And we're not going to out you to everybody. Okay. We're not going to say like, oh, this one's came to us. It's very kind of confidential. We just come and talk and we see what help you need and what resources we can get for you. Okay. So feel free to do that. We've had kids, you know, come to us and say, I need help. Or if you just have questions, you can come to us and we can answer them for you. My email's on there if you need any more information about this stuff. Okay. And we really appreciate you guys watching this. And we hope you learned something. Hope it wasn't too boring. Tried to keep it a little more entertaining. But just remember what we talked about and think about this stuff the next time, you know, you see someone vaping or someone offers you one.